Hello everyone, Rechief here. It's nearly 4 a.m. my time, uh, and I can't sleep. So I figured rather than just lying in bed and staring up at the ceiling, I would uh, do a little recording, and I decided to record a little game uh, called Path of Exile. It is, I believe, in beta right now, and it's pretty, pretty new. It's, uh, you know, sort of Diablo-like. Uh, if you're if you're a fan of Diablo, it's definitely worth checking out. If you are a fan of Torchlight, it's worth checking out. All those kinds of games, uh, you know, it is it is similar yet different, and I have been enjoying my time with it so far. Even though my uh, Ranger, anyway, even though my Archer type class is uh, only level five right now, uh, there are a lot of really neat things about this game that kind of set it apart and I thought I'd just go over a few of those um, and hopefully that will clear my mind enough that I'll be able to get maybe two hours of shut eye before work so uh, first of all for those of you who are familiar with the genre there are definitely some neat little neat little variations that I think you'll appreciate uh, you you know games like this are are all all about, uh, or at least partly about, you know, getting getting and using various skills. And in my case, I've already got a couple. I have, uh, first of all, aside from just the normal shot that you have, I have flaming arrows, which is neat, uh, which are just, you know, they're flaming arrows. They do some extra fire damage. I think they have a chance to, like, immolate the enemy and just kind of burn them for extra damage, which is always nice. I have, like, uh, I have split arrows, which is like a spread shot. Which is pretty cool. Hit multiple enemies at the same time. Good for thinning out big groups. Uh, and then I have fire traps. <clears throat> I could put three down at one time. And uh, basically, if an enemy walks over one of these, not me, fortunately, uh, they will explode. And then they will deal some some fire damage. Let me see if I can test that out. Any any dudes out here? Looks like lots of people are dead. Well, I'll run into somebody uh, pretty soon. Oh, come on. Let's go a little faster here. I'll explain what I just did later. Uh, that's another really cool feature of this game. Here we go. So, yeah. We can, we can shoot some people. We can throw down some fire traps, which will then explode. There we go. Shoot a fire arrow. You know. Typical isometric action RPG type stuff. Oh. Oh, you look serious. Not serious enough for me. Oh, oh no. I'm very new at this game. I've played for maybe an hour or two. So anyway, you know, lots of skills. What's cool about it, though, is that rather than getting skills from, from some kind of, like, upgrade path or pumping them into skill, pumping skill points into, like, you know, traits or whatever. In this case, um, you find skill gems. And you can slot these into your items. Like, this is the split arrow gem. Because I have this slot into my, slotted, I should say, into my bow, uh, it gives me the split arrow skill. Then, as you kill enemies, <clears throat> you can level up your gems, your uh, skill gems. And, uh, I guess, increase their effectiveness. So I've got that, and then somewhere else I have my other stuff. Here's the fire trap gem and my boots, so like it doesn't have to be in your weapon. And here's burning arrow in my hat. And um, you can take it out and put it back in whenever you want. Uh, although certain colors correspond to certain... Like, for instance, I can only slot this into a green, I think, that is green slot. Um, fortunately, my hat's got two of them. I could take this out, put it in here, I could take this and put it over here. You know, it, uh, it's neat. It kind of reminds me of, uh, Materia from Final Fantasy VII. Um, although the prospect of actually equipping things to get skills reminds me kind of more of Final Fantasy IX. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so that's one cool thing about this game, is the whole slotting skills system really kind of makes you think about like what you need and what you don't uh, and that's that's always an interesting little little thing you can have going on there second cool thing 
uh, rather than like in other kind of games of this genre, having to buy um, lots of different potions and constantly have huge stocks of potions in order to heal yourself, you get self-replenishing flasks and you can equip up to five at a time. In this case, I have uh, two life flasks, two mana flasks. I'll get to that flask in a second. Um, and what's cool about them is, you know, I can use a little bit of that one. You'll see it's depleted some. And then the way you recover it is by killing enemies. The more enemies you kill, like if I kill this guy and this guy, and then if you look here, it's replenished a little bit. So you keep killing, you keep getting more back. And that's the way potions work. You don't have to constantly buy, you know, you don't have to constantly keep a big stock of potions, taking up space in your inventory and whatever, because uh, you just kind of have like a potion belt here or whatever this is. I guess it's probably a belt. Um, so that's really neat. And then another cool thing about all this is that instead of just having health and mana flasks of varying quality, although they do have that, you get other kinds of flasks too. Like, if I wanted to get away from these guys, I would just activate my Quicksilver Flask. Which is what you saw me do earlier, and that gives me extra movement speed. Uh, 40%, in fact, which is pretty nice. And that refills, same as the others, by killing enemies. Um, I, ha I have not gotten any other kind of unique flasks like that. I'm, I'll be really interested to see what they're like when I do. <clears throat> also, something I have equipped, or maybe some skill I have or something, is giving me lightning damage. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe the quiver? Oh yeah, the conductive quiver. So that's neat. I just always do a little bit of lightning damage. That's cool. Uh, so what have we talked about so far? We talked about skills, which are nice. Potions which are also very nice. Oh, another thing I want to talk about that's uh, pretty cool is... So now they got through these, these dudes is how the uh, in-game economy works. And I don't mean the player-to-player -player economy, because I haven't messed around with that much yet. In fact, I haven't messed around with it at all. I don't know why I said much. Uh, but just the way buying and selling works. You may have seen, when I had my inventory, inventory panel up, that there's no measure of how much gold I have, and there's, like, none over here, or any of that. That's because there is no gold in this game. There's no... Uh, there's no unit of currency that doesn't have some other application. Let me just show you. So I'm going to go over to Nessa here, my, mm -hmm. my sort of vendor-in-chief lady I sell my stuff to, usually. I'll sell her some of this, and you'll see, this is my offer, what I'm selling. When I put that there, she offers something. It's not gold, though. In this case, it's transmutation shards, which uh, when I collect 20 of them, I get an orb of transmutation, which will take one of my like mundane items and make it into a magical item and give it, you know, increased stats and things like that. So then I'm like, okay, you know, you drive a hard bargain. What if I also give you one of these? Oh, you'll give me four. So uh, this, 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 and this. Now, she wants to give me a scroll of wisdom and four transmutation shards. So scrolls of wisdom, which are uh, scrolls of identify, basically. They let you identify stats. And then other things, basically you're bartering. It's really neat, like instead of paying gold for all this stuff, you just offer up all this and then your uh, your vendor offers up some items in return of value. And uh, you kind of barter with all this stuff. It's, you know, I like it a lot. It's, uh, it's very different. And then if you purchase items, it's the same thing. Like, you know, if I wanted to buy one, if I wanted to buy this belt, like, oh, that will cost two scrolls of wisdom. If I wanted to buy this thing, this life flask, three scrolls of wisdom. How about this? Also three. Ooh, that costs a bunch of portal scrolls. Uh, that's for a whole orb of transmutation, which is what I was just talking about. Or, you know, these things cost lots of stuff. Oh, I actually have a couple of these. I should use them. Anyway, um, so buying and selling... You know, basically, rather than farming lots of gold, you kind of have to exchange for the kinds of different items that you want to use to uh, to buy and sell. I think it's like, a, is this guy a blacksmith? Still alive, maybe? are we? Okay, yeah, you can you can buy weapons and armor from him. So uh, you know, I've been playing for 
not that long, but it's already it's already interesting. And, you know, there are a lot of people out there who'll say like, oh, you know, uh, uh, Path of Exile is already looking so much better than Torchlight Two. It's already looking so much better than whatever else. Um, actually, though, the more I've played this game, the more it's made me appreciate a lot of stuff that goes on in Torchlight 2 and kind of what Torchlight 2 maybe does better than this and what this does better than Torchlight 2. You know, the games can exist um, together and they can be played together. I really don't think... I, I, I don't... I don't see a need to rank them or whatever. Like, just play both of them and enjoy them. I've been playing both of them. I've been enjoying them. But, uh, yeah, Path of Exile. It's worth checking out. It's uh, very new, and it's very free. There are, well, I should mention, there are going to be, or maybe there already are, microtransactions. But they're not, um, and I guess when you purchase stuff, it, it shows up here. Uh, they're not, like, game-breaking. I think they're all cosmetic. Uh, I believe that one of the sort of founding principles of this game is that they didn't want the microtransactions to be unethical, I believe is the term they used. Uh, so that's really neat. Um, but yeah, the, the core game itself is free. Uh, you know, there's really no reason not to check it out, give Grinding Gear Games, that being the, uh, the developer, you know, some support. So uh, this has been ReChief with some <laughs> Insomniac game previews, I guess. And, uh, I will see you tomorrow with some Live Alive. Catch you then.